All right, so let's look at a, a fairly simple one here. So we're going to want to minimize C, which usually is going to be our cost. And that's going to be equal to 40x1 plus 12x2 plus 40x3. Subject to, we have 2x1 plus x2 plus 5x3 greater than or equal to 20. And 4x1 plus x2 plus x3 is greater than or equal to 30. And all our uh, variables x1, x2, and x3 have to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, the key here is, uh, once we do this, notice these are all greater than or equal to. And what we need to do is we're going to uh, <clears throat> end up getting them to be going the other direction and solving that kind of problem. So first things first, we have to follow the steps. And if we remember what the steps were, go back here, right, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we have to form that dual problem. So we have to write this into a matrix A and then find the transpose. Okay, so step one is we say, a is equal to what? Well, it's going to be equal to. Now, we just start with our subjects here. Subject 2, we have a 2, a 1, a 5, and a 20. And we have a 4, a 1, a 1, and a 30. And we have a 40. Now we use the top row. And then a 12, and then a 40. And we call that a 1. And conventionally, this is how it's going to look. And then what we want to do is we want to find A transpose. And so what happens is our uh, first row becomes our first column. Our second row becomes our second column. And our third row becomes our third column. So now if we were thinking about this. This is x1, x2, x3. And now with our transpose, what's going to happen is we're going to have a y1, and a y2. We're changing our variable types. So going down uh, here, we're going to have a 2, a 1, a 5, and a 20. Then we'll have a 4, a 1, a 1, and a 30. And then our last one, let's go ahead and put our line here, is going to be a 40, a 12, a 40, yeah, and then a 1. And so that then is going to be our A transpose. Okay, so again, we start with X's, and when we do the and transpose, then we convert those to Y's. So that's going to be the first step we have to do. So we're converting one variable to another variable. And now we have to state the dual problem. And so now, this is how we're going to write our new problem. And our new problem, instead of being minimized, is going to be maximized. So we're going to maximize P equals, well, okay. So, oh, I guess I better put that last row here. So now I maximize it, and we're going to say 20Y1 plus 30Y2, which is those two. And then we're going to say subject to. And then we just write our rows. We have what? A 2y1 plus a 4y2 is going to be less than or equal to 40. Oops. 40, not 0, 4. And then we're going to have a y1 plus a y2 less than or equal to 12. And a 5y1 plus a y2 less than or equal to 40. And now in this case, down on the spot, I'm going to have y1 y2 are going to be basically uh, greater than greater than or equal to 0, OK? All right, so that's stated our dual problem. Now we have to go from our dual problem to the E system, OK? So now we're basically where we were in sec the previous section, 6.2. We have a maximization problem. And now we're going to go, OK, well, now what we have to do is we're going to say, OK, well, now this is going to be a 2y1 plus a 4y2 plus, and now we're going to, because we need to have our variables x's, we're going to say our slack variable now that we're going to add in here is going to be called x1. So these are going to be our slack variables. And so that's going to then equal what, uh, 40. And then we're going to have y1 plus y2 plus, now we're going to have x2, and that's going to equal 12. And then we're going to have 5y1 plus y2 plus, now we have x3, and that's going to be equal to 40. And now we take everything to the other side. So we're going to have a minus 20y1 minus 30y2, and then that's going to be plus a p equals 0. 
So this is going to be our uh, system, our initial system uh, that we need to do and put that into our initial tableau. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it into our tableau. So again, we started with minimization. We have took our A, did our A transpose. Basically, the first row becomes the first column, second row, second column, third row becomes the third column. Then we stated our dual problem from that. So we just kind of went across the board and, you know, bottom row is going to be the maximize, what we maximize, everything else is subject to. Take that, convert it into uh, adding the slack variables to make it the E system. And when we have the E system, our slack variables are not S's anymore, they're X's because we need to go back to X's because that's going to be our initial thing. So once we've solved this, you'll see what happens is, you know, before uh, we had, you know, X1 and X2 on the side when we had our tableau and then we read it to the right. Well, this time we're going to have X's at the top and we're going to read to the bottom. Okay, so it's going to be kind of a totally different thing. So now let's write our tableau here. All right, so again, since we're doing uh, slack variables, that's going to be x1, x2, x3. Then we still have our p at the bottom. And we have up the top, we have y1, y2. Then we have x1, x2, x3, p. So now we have to go a little bit further. And if you notice, these go out quite a bit uh, more as far as how they're working. And so uh, now what we need to do is we need to plug in our variables from our thing. So we had a 2, a 4, a 1, a 0, a 0, a 0, and then we had a 40. And then we had a 1, a 1, a 0, a 1, a 0, a 0, and then a 12. Then we had a 5, a 1, a 0, a 0, a 1, a 0, back to a 40. And then we had the minus 20, minus 30, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 0. All right. Now we're doing the same thing as we did before. We're going to look for the largest negative. Well, that's the largest negative. So now we find, like we did before, the quotient. So we're going to take, in this case, 40 divided by what's in that row. It looks like it's a 4. So that's going to give us a 10. Here we're going to have a 12 divided by, it looks like a 1, so that's a 12. Here we're going to have a 40 divided by a 1. And so that's going to be a 40. So the smallest one is this one. So if we want to figure out which is our pivot element, that's going to be our pivot element. Okay. So that means if we write that, this is going to enter and this one is going to exit. Okay. So now let's make a different color. And so what we need to do is make this a one. So we're going to take one fourth row one goes to row one. Okay. Now, um, for the sake of the argument, we could do all these at the same time and make those equal to zero or we could just go ahead and just do this one i know some people like to do one at a time some like to do others i'll do just the quarter one that way i get a one here then it's going to be easier to make those to be zero so when we do that what we have is going to be what well if this is entering y1 so that means that's going to be a y1 and then x2 x3 and then p this is y1 y2 x1, x2, x3, p, and a crooked line. And so now we're taking a fourth of that. So that gives us what? Well, now we're going to have a half. That'll give us a one. Divide by four, that's going to be a quarter. That's going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero. And that's going to be what? 10. And then everything else is the same for this first one because we're just doing that one step only. So then. Uh, and that's a one, I believe. I can't read my handwriting. And then a minus 20, minus 30, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So now, again, if we circle that, that's where we're at. We're, we're pivoting there. So we're going to take minus row 1 plus row 2 goes to row 2. We're going to be a minus row 1 plus row 3 goes to row 3. And we're going to do this time, 30, row 1 plus row 4 goes to row 4. Okay. 
So when we do that, that'll go zero, 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 and that's going to give us what we've been uh, working with, trying to get those to be zero. So let's go to the next page, and I'll have that one written down so I can have those. All right, so uh, we have now, or my marking pencil here, so we have a Y1, a Y2, X1, X2, X3, P, and then I had uh, the Y2... And then we had why oh, hello y two and then then we had x two x three and then a p and so then if we put all our lines in here and notice this takes a little bit more room than previous ones because you know we're having more more variables in here so we have to take a little bit more space so first row stays the same we have a half a one one quarter and then we had zero 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 ten. And then we took a minus the first row plus the second row. So that's going to give us a half, zero, a minus one fourth. And then we had a one, a zero, zero. And that gives us a two. And then that one gives us nine halves. And then a zero. Uh, that gives us a minus one quarter, zero, one, zero. And that gives us 30. And then here we have a minus five, a zero. Uh, that one was. 30 over 4, 0, 0, 1, and 300. All right. So that's our tableau. And again, now we have our 1 and our zeros down. So now we look for the next largest negative. Well, that one is this. So we'll go back over here, quotient. And so now we're going to have a 10 divided by, and we're going to divide it by a, a 0.5. So that's going to give us, what, 20? And then we're going to have a 2 divided by a 0.5. So that's going to give us, what, a 4. And then we'll have a 30 divided by uh, 9 halves. And so flip that over. So that's going to give us that divided by 3. So that should look like 20 over 3, I think. So that's going to be, this one looks to be the smallest. So that means this one is going to be our pivot element, okay? And with that being our pivot element, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take two times row two, and that's gonna be our new row two because we need to have that to be a one. Well, then we can do a minus row two plus row one goes to row one, and we can do a negative nine times row two uh, plus row three goes to row three. And this one, if we take that one, if we take, oh, let's see, five halves times it, five halves row two plus row four now, that can be our new row four. So I think this one was easier just to do them all in one step. And so now let's go ahead and see what we have now. So now we have this one is entering and this one is exiting. All right, so now we have what? We have y2, y1, and then x3, and then we have a p, and we have y1, y2, x1, x2, x3, p, and... All right. So first things first, let's take this row times the two. So we're going to have a one, and then we'll have a zero, and then we'll have a minus one half. And then we'll have a two, a zero, a zero, and a four. Now we're going to take a minus this plus that. And so that's going to give us what? A zero. Minus that plus that's going to be a one. Minus that plus that's going to give us a half. And that's going to give us a minus one a zero, a zero, uh, that looks like it's going to be an eight. And now we're taking a minus nine times this plus that, so that better be zero. And that's going to be a zero. And that's going to be just a positive two, rather. And that's going to be a nine. Wait, minus nine times that row. That's a minus nine, sorry. And then that's going to be a 1, and that's going to be a 0, 
And that's going to be a minus 18, so that's going to be a 12. Now we're going to take uh, f uh, 5. Wait, do I want to take a 5 halves that? That doesn't seem right. If I take uh, 2, I take that times 10, rather, I think is what I really want. I think I wrote down the wrong thing. Doop. So if I take a 10 times that, that'll give me a 5. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so 10 times uh, half gives me a 5. Minus 5, that gives me a 0. That gives me a 0. Uh, 10 times that plus that should give me 5. 10 times that's going to be a 10. 10 times that's going to be a 0. It's going to be a 1. It's going to be 320, looks like. And so now we look, and if we see all of our indicators are posit positive, so we're going to stop. Okay. Now here is where this differs from the previous one. Previously, we would read from this side over here and go over here. This time, though, we're going to read from the top. So maybe I should make this a different color. Uh, I don't know what color we want to do. Let's do, I don't know, peach. So peach, we're going to look at this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to read down to here, to here, and to here. Okay, And this number over here, uh, the 320, is still going to be our value. So now what we're going to say is, remember, this was a minimization problem. So we're going to minimize the min C is equal to what? Well, it's equal to 320 when x1 equals what? 5, x2 equals 10, and x3 equals 0. So we get our numbers down here now, and we've solved the minimization problem. All right, so let's stop there and we'll come back for some more.